Hey everybody, welcome back to Minya Plays. Some more Songs of Six. Sort of continuing where we left off. Um, I had to let the game run to, to be able to achieve the what I needed to happen for the topic I wanted to go over today. But a couple of things. First, in the previous video, uh, I was re-watching it before I uh, posted it on the industry. And uh, I noticed that when I set up my cotton coal, I actually set up iron instead of coal. So I've corrected that. Um, that helped because all these guys were running to bring coal over here uh, a little too far for my taste. Also, the game's been running for quite a while. I, I was able to fill in all of the roads on this side of the map. I mined out pretty much every little bit of stone that I could get over here in this quadrant um, to pave these roads. And, uh, you know, got that all finished on this side. Uh, oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I just saw that. Uh, got that almost all finished on this side. Um, and I also, you know, put in my doors and my walls around these things. So, uh, as far as light coverage, you can see this light coverage 19%. And I, you know, it's hard to figure out because I have lights everywhere. 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 Um, and I, I'm pretty sure that what it is is because I put up walls and doors, the light doesn't penetrate into the workshops. Uh, so when the people are in the workshops doing their thing, um, they don't have access to the light. So that doesn't count as having light access. So it's only going to give them access when they're actually traveling somewhere on a road or, you know, pass by one. Um, so that was there's just a couple of minor things I wanted to talk about. The big topic for today uh, is death and dying. Um, as you have probably experienced for yourself, if you've played this game at all, your peasants die a lot. Uh, they die a lot. And the way the mechanics are set up right now, there's there's no healing uh, mechanic whatsoever in this game. So once you get an injury, uh, however it happens, your peasant dies. Eventually. I mean, they might get injured and then, you know, go work for a while in the fields or whatever, and then all of a sudden they just drop over dead, and it says, died from injuries. And you have no idea what caused those inju inju injuries. Uh, so, I have a theory. Uh, I'm, again, this is all trial and error and based on experience and uh, something that happened to me in a past playthrough. So, animals, they're very animal-like. Um, so, if you look here, you can see a large cluster. Oh, those are the baddies, too. Uh, and stag beasts in... Uh, stag beasts and stag beasts and these guys they multiply uh, maybe not as quickly as rabbits but if you leave these alone for long enough they will fill your map um, so much so that you can watch your little green arrows walk through and they go bump 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 and, and now they're injured and they're gonna die um, just because they were walking to some job to go get some coal or pick up some stone or something. Uh, so in order to control that, I know I kind of glossed over this in an earlier episode, but it's really, really important that you keep the animals under control and away from your people as much as you can. Um, so for that, you know, we set up the hunter wall. And uh, so while I was letting the game run, uh, I was able to get my wall set up and like this. And I just do this, uh, this little zigzaggy pattern um, to keep kind of a front line. And uh, so when I put down a new line, um, then I usually go behind and take out the previous one. Uh, in this case, I didn't take these out at the time that I was doing the deleting because there was there was some blue still in this area that hadn't been pushed out or hunted down yet and I do not want them coming back in here because this line that I have here uh, I have going the entire way across the map as 
far as the eye can see. <laughs> okay, here's a bug for you. When you click the X to close that window and you have the hunter selected so that you can see the map edge, it places one. Okay. So yeah, so I keep these um, going like this and then just every so often when, you know, when I think about it, I'll go add another row to the zigzaggy pattern and, and delete the previous one and I keep pushing them up the map. So if you look, I always do that. Uh, if you look at my mini map, you see this line of hunters now. Um, and if I just scroll around below this line, you don't see any little white dots, no creatures here whatsoever. They're all gone. Other than uh, that's the creatures that are in my ranch. So I, I'm okay with them because they're not going to kill my my people. Uh, yeah, so, so we've cleared them all out all the way up to here, which is about a third of the map so far. And it's truly my intention to keep pushing that wall all the way to the top of the map until they're completely gone. Uh, because you might have peasants. I, I've never really paid any attention to how peasants enter the map when they join your colony because they're they're dying, they're joining, they're dying, they're joining uh, all the time. So I, I've never really tried to track down which map edge they come in from and what their path is. And, and I suppose if, if they follow a consistent path, you could just put a line of hunters along that path to keep it uh, animal clear, animal free, or even fencing, wooden fencing would work, you know, if you give them a path to walk down that blocks the animals from having access to that path. Um, and, and it's all really about just less people dying. Um, you know, I'd rather them die from old age than, uh, than from bumping into a stag beast or, well, probably not going to die from that, but, uh, you know, just the beasts in general. And it gets ridiculous. I, I seriously had uh, one playthrough where I, I was building this great village and I was really excited about the progress I was making. And then I had this death wave and my graveyards just kept filling up, filling up, filling up and I couldn't figure out why, what was going on. Uh, because it had happened right after a raid so I just assumed that, you know, oh, I had some unburied corpses and, you know, the grave diggers are going to kill uh, you know, finish burying them all, and then, then my debuff goes away. And it never went away. It kept going. And that's when I noticed, because I had not done any hunting whatsoever, that my entire map was covered in, you know, this density of stag beasts. And it was almost all stag beasts all over the... Uh, just covering the map. And I just ignored them because, you know, I wasn't hunting, so I didn't care. Well, you need to care. Uh, you need to push them back and uh, keep them away from your citizens. Now, unfortunately, while you're doing this, you're going to have deaths because your hunters are being exposed to them. And, uh, you know, it's it's hunter be hunted, right? So uh, your hunters are going to get injured and they're going to die and they're going to fill up your graveyards. But if you just put a new line every now and then, then you'll get a small wave of hunters dying and being replaced by new ones as you're pushing the animals uh, further and further away from your from your village so yeah that's uh I, I saw some video and and uh somebody was streaming this game and they they were just building graveyard after graveyard and they really weren't sure why people were dying uh, it, to their credit they did have a very large population at the time so uh you know naturally you think Oh, I've, I've got a lot of people, so a lot of people are going to die. I just need to keep building graveyards. Mm, it was probably because the map was littered with these. They were everywhere, all over his map. And, uh, yeah, and so they, I'm sure they were killing those guys working in the fields. They just, they were killing them everywhere, and you don't, you don't realize it. So there you go. That's tip number one. And then the other thing, so I saved this game. Uh and then paused it just so I can show you this because I've heard this question come up. People have talked about it. So I wanted to do a little experiment. So I had three little graveyards over here that I started with that each had, you know, just a few graves in them. Um, and off screen or off camera there, I, I built this nice one. Um, in fact, it's so nice. People are dying to get in <laughs> uh, to see statues of me. 
surrounding it and trees and everything. So I still have the 100% graveyard respect. And then what I did was um, I deactivated uh, this one and this one. And so by deactivating them, nobody knew gets buried there. And eventually they clean themselves out. So I just wanted to show you um, that it's okay to delete an empty graveyard. All right. uh, this is not going to give me grave disrespect. Uh, I, I've done this in an actual live game, so I, I don't need to turn the game on. Well, I can. I'll turn it on. We'll run it just so you can see my population is not dropping. I do not have grave desecration debuff. All right. um, so I can do the same with this one. And no, no desecration debuff. So you can move your graves around. You just have to deactivate them first. Now this one, uh, on purpose, I did not deactivate. And that's the reason I saved the game right before I started this. And then I started it paused while I sat here talking to you. Uh, because I wanted to run a little experiment just to see how bad it is. Um, so, yeah, forget that I did this. But let's delete that. So it is the second day of spring on the 19th year at this point. I was letting the game run for a while. My reputation went to zero. Um, obviously my village, my entire village is going to self-destruct because of that. But again, that's why I saved it before I did this. Just to show you. Uh, that's a pretty steep penalty. I would think that there would be some... Uh, uh, some sick people in these peasants that uh, really wouldn't be so offended by it, but penalty will decrease with time. Up oh, there, it's starting to decrease. It's actually decreasing quicker than I thought. There was uh, some discussion uh, someone was having, and they wanted to know they'd heard it takes like three years for uh, for a village to recover from this. Um, this does not look like it's going to take three years to recover from. Unless uh, unless the rate at which this is recovering slows down, but it doesn't appear to be. And, and I don't know if, uh, if that's the intended behavior or a bug, but I never... It didn't seem like I lost any popu... I lost reputation... Uh, briefly, but I did not lose population. So nobody, nobody left. They might have been mad at me for a minute, but they didn't leave. And it's still the third day of summer, so it lasted for three days, not not three years. Um, yeah, so that wasn't horrible, horrible. So there you go. Uh, everything you wanted to know about uh, graves and desecration. Um, Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to do, so <laughs> I'm getting to that point, excuse me, I'm getting to that point of uh, population where I wanted to start uh, another food area. Um, so a quick way to do this, because this was a lot of work to draw in all these roads and stuff, and I still have to do that over here. Um, but just a quick and easy way to do this this little pattern is pretty simple. You line up this edge and go one, two, three for the road. And uh, so, you know, I just did that. I placed this first one to line up with the road that would be coming down here. And then I just placed them all right on those legs with the, with the road distance between them. And uh, so we're ready to go. All I got to do is draw in the roads and, uh, and bring over the kitchen. Um, and I'll have, well, in the storehouses. Uh, and I'll have warehouses. <laughs> and I'll have a whole new setup over there ready to go. Uh, because I'm noticing that um, I like to have at least a year's worth uh, in reserves. Uh, especially come, you know, once the first day of winter hits. Which is the third day of autumn now. So, yeah, I like to have a year's worth. And I was getting close to not having a year's worth. So, it's time to start setting up the next area. Um... Also, two tailors with four in each one, they are kicking butt. Uh, 
I've got so much extra clothes I could afford to give these people two or maybe even three pieces of clothing they are rocking it um, the weaver is having a hard time keeping up and making enough fabric so I don't have a huge surplus of fabric but I was under the impression that the tailors required uh, a pelt and fabric. Uh, I did look at this earlier though and I had used like I don't know 25 fabric and 6 pelts because I, I don't have any pelts right now since I still can't get enough eggs. <laughs> for all the time I left this game run for those graveyards to empty out I'm halfway to finishing the first pasture. <laughs> uh, it's fun. So so yeah, uh, I'm not 100% sure, because uh, from this it looks like it, it requires both, um, but I keep hearing that it's, a, it's an or, not an and. Um, but see the numbers, they still, they line up to make it look pretty even. But anyway, I'm hoping that uh, once I actually get the eggs I need and get this farm going, um, that, uh, that the weaver, uh, I'll start getting a bit more of a surplus in fabric because I li like I said uh, in an earlier video I like to use carpets instead of knickknacks to bring up the coziness ratings or the uh, efficiency ratings of rooms um, since they don't get in the way and I'm gonna need fabric to do that so so I'm gonna probably uh, get the next farm area set up over here uh, or at least planned out and uh, and I might plan out uh, another batch of industry over here as well uh, to just kind of double everything up, double up the resources and, and whatnot. Um, you know, I built this fence for a reason, to force them to use the road so they can go along the light, and they still circumvent it. Uh, I have to figure out something to do there, because I can't fence this off because of the fishermen need to get to it. And it's funny, you draw a fence right up to the water, and they go around it and go through the water. So it's like you can't stop them. They're determined to go this way. Uh, I guess sorry I got distracted by that pathing one thing I can do is do this and do it while I'm not in planning mode and I bet that puts a stop to it unless of course I had one of those yeah does anybody know how to fix this? F well, there's flowers on the ground, so I can't put a fence post there. Oh, and I see I'm out of wood, so I'm going to need to... See, I knew eventually I would need more than four. So, and that's what happens when you're not paying attention, because uh, a lot of my wood's getting turned into coal. A lot of my stone is getting turned into this cut stone. Uh, I might shut the mason off, I'm not sure yet. There, that should stop that pathing. Yep. Now, uh, fences are your friends sometimes, especially for an area that's kind of dead, like this one, this one is. Um, so, force them to go around and use the roads and the lights and whatever. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's going to do it. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover in this episode. Um, if you got any questions or anything you'd like me to take a look at and cover for you, uh, leave a comment below. Love to hear from you. Thanks for your attention, and happy gaming.